What's up guys? So today I'm talking about a subject that I've seen come up in my YouTube comments quite a bit in the last week, uh, as well as in my stream chat and stuff like that. And the question here is, is GT Goku overpowered? So I've been seeing a lot of sentiment of like, oh, this character is clearly a problem. He's definitely going to be nerfed and stuff like that. And even Goichi on his Twitter, he said GT Goku may be S tier. And a bunch of very well-known and skilled players are in the replies saying that they agree and they think he might be S tier too. So let's talk about it. Do we think that GT Goku is overpowered? Do we think he's top tier? What does it even mean to be overpowered? Do we think he's deserving of nerfs? That kind of thing. Uh, so, first of all, this comes with the very big caveat that the character has only been out for a week, right? And I think whenever anyone is discussing how good the character is, it kind of comes with the built-in sort of expectation of, we could be wrong. We don't really know that well after a week how good the character is, but I think it's pretty clear that he is fairly strong, but the question is just, like, is he in the top, like, third of the cast? Or is he in the top three of the cast, you know? That's where, uh, you know, I think that the discussion has some merit. And I think that uh, that's kind of what I'm going to try to cover today. So we're going to come at this from kind of three angles here. Uh, the first angle is the pros of GT Goku. What makes him strong? What has the potential to make him a top tier character or an abusable character? Uh, then we're going to go over his cons. What do I think are issues that the character currently has that could prevent him from reaching the same status as someone like Bardock or Piccolo or Gotenks, something like that. Uh, and then third, we're gonna go into what I think needs to be done, if anything. Do I think that there needs to be a nerf? What about the character, if they were gonna nerf him, do I think deserves it? So uh, we're gonna jump into training mode here and I'll just talk through a little bit of the aspects of the character and then we can discuss uh, exactly what I think the situation is with GT Goku right now. Alright, so let's talk about pros and cons here. So I think the first big pro that GT Goku has that a lot of people are sort of amazed by is just how much damage he can do. This guy is a very, very damaging character. Uh, he has probably more TODs than any other character in the cast so far. Because of his ability to combo off of his level 3, uh, he can just do insano damage. Uh, way more than most of the characters in the cast, and it's a lot easier for him to sort of do a zero to death uh, than it is for a lot of other characters. So, uh, really, really strong damage. It just makes it so that it's really, really threatening, and whenever he has a lot of meter, and especially whenever he has you in the corner, uh, he can really kill you fast. So, uh, do I think that this is a problem? I'm not really convinced that his damage is a problem. Uh, reason being, first of all, in order to kill the opponent, you pretty much always need some combination of assists, you need corner, or you need spark. And sometimes you need more than one of those, and you need meter as well. Uh, so, like, generally, he's not going to be getting TODs in, like, mid-screen situations. It's very hard. You need, like, some specific setups in order to do that. Uh, and it just doesn't seem like you're going to see that that often. But in the corner, uh, his TOD options do open up a lot, especially when he has sparking. But still, you are going to need like a clean down medium or something like that. It's pretty hard for him to TOD off of something like this, where you scale the follow-up combo uh, with some hits beforehand. This usually is not going to do enough damage uh, to go into a TOD. Uh, so I don't really think his damage is that much of a problem, and in fact, I would be perfectly fine if every character in the game did this amount of damage. I don't think that touch of death combos are a problem in a 3v3 game, provided they require so many resources that you can't really do more than one a match. Like, it's pretty much impossible to do more than one TOD in a match of Dragon Ball Fighters because most of them involve sparking, and the ones that don't involve sparking involve, like, double assist and seven meters or something like that. So I don't think you're going to see multiple TODs in a match, so I don't think it's a problem. I think it's perfectly healthy for the game to have 100% combos, provided they utilize a lot of resources. So... Uh, I don't think his damage is that much of a problem, and I do think you are going to see the occasional touch of death from GT Goku in a tournament, but I don't think it's going to be like every match 
first hit that GT Goku gets in every match, he's just going to kill you off it. I don't think that's the case. I think the requirements are a little bit too specific for him to just be pulling out 100% combos constantly. Uh, next up, though, another really big pro that he has is actually his post-level 3 Oki. So let's say you're in one of those situations I talked about, you know, where your combo has like a few light hits at the start that you know is going to scale it. You know you're probably not going to be able to kill the opponent off this combo. So instead, the much more optimal strategy is you go into his level 3 Spirit Bomb, and then you go for a setup. You go for a mix-up on the opponent as they're waking up. This is also called Okizeme. And uh, GT Goku has some of the best post-level 3 Oki in the game off of his Spirit Bomb. It's actually insane how much time you have to set up, you know, to really get an ambiguous mix-up going and deliver it right to the opponent as they wake up. It's really, really crazy. If you think back to what Bardock was like before they nerfed his level 3, Bardock, like, he would land his level 3, he would get a ridiculous 50-50, and then he would kill you off it. And GT Goku gets even better mix-ups post-level 3 than Bardock did. GT Goku's post-level 3 mix-ups are much more robust and ambiguous than Bardock's were, which I know is, like, crazy to think about, but I, I think that that's true. He just has so much time to set up, it's ridiculous. So do I think that this is a problem? Well, the big difference between GT Goku post-level 3 mix-ups and Bardock post-level 3 mix-ups is you cannot Z-change into GT Goku's Spirit Bomb. You just can't do it. You can only go into his Dragon Fist level 3, which you don't get nearly as good of Oki off this. You don't even really get a pure 50-50 off this. You just kind of get like instant air dash versus throw versus low. So you cannot Z-change into it. Nor can you really do something like, if you get a hit mid-screen, you know, tag him in. There's not really any way for me to go into Spirit Bomb here. We would have to have Corner, and then we would have to have some extra meter for Vanish, or have my other assist up. So, uh, it's a lot more difficult to set up the Spirit Bomb. That's kind of what I'm getting at. It's not like uh, Bardock, where you, like, put him in slot 3, you get any hit with your point character, and then you just know that you're going to be able to bring in the level 3 and get that ridiculous mix-up. It's not like that. You really need kind of a more specific setup to go into his level 3. So do I think that it's going to be a situation like we had at EVO last year, where like in the top 8, most of the teams are going to have GT Goku, and we're just going to see like 20 level 3s per match? I don't think that that's the case, but uh, you know, it's so strong that I could be wrong. It is, it is very, very powerful, the post-level 3 mix-up. We might end up seeing it a lot. I do think that's probably the single best thing about the character. Uh, so that's kind of what has me the most scared about him being really strong. But again, I don't think that it is as broken as pre-nerf Bardock. So with that as like a baseline, you know, that gives us a good idea of sort of the cap of how good GT Goku could be. I don't think he's going to be as crazy as Bardock was, but uh, again, it is early. We don't really know. It could end up going that way, but we'll have to wait and see. But now I want to talk about a few cons that the character has. Even though I do think he's strong, I do think he has some issues. Primarily, I don't think his neutral is that amazing. Uh, if you compare him to a character, again, like Bardock, uh, he does have the power pull. Power pull is pretty nice, don't get me wrong. This is a very good move for controlling space, and he can confirm off it from like half screen away. This is a really good move. Uh, but is it as good as Bardock Lariat? Like, not really. And he has this move, which a lot of people are like, oh, he has, he also has Bardock Lariat. He can just travel halfway across the screen. But this is so much slower than Bardock Lariat. Plus, it doesn't have like the same level of uh, startup and stuff like that. So. Uh, I don't think it's nearly as good as Bardock Larry, and also obviously his auto combo, while his 5A is a good move, this is like a pretty big hitbox for a 5A, especially for a character this small. He does not have Bardock's auto combo. Uh, so I don't think his neutral is as good as a character like Bardock, or, you know, that being said, a character like Piccolo either. Uh, and, you know, the beams are nice. Don't get me wrong, I do think his beams are good, but like with the stubby normals, and stuff like that. I just think it can be kind of hard to get hits without using an assist. I think assists are kind of his primary way to close space and get his offense started. So in those situations where you don't have an assist up, uh, it can be a little bit hard to get a hit. 
Uh, another issue that I think GT Goku has is I think he's somewhat vulnerable to Super Dash. You know, unlike a character like Super Saiyan Goku, he cannot fire a horizontal beam. Horizontal beams are really nice for dealing with people who do like jump back into Super Dash. He can't do that, so I think that makes him a little bit weaker to Super Dash. And if you do, you know, a ground beam, it can just whiff over their head and then they can just run up and hit you. Uh, so his space coverage is not nearly as good as someone like Super Saiyan Goku, but obviously Super Saiyan Goku has maybe like the best neutral in the entire game, so that's not really a fair comparison. And his power pull, like, you hit people out of Super Dash with power pull sometimes, it can definitely happen. Uh, but a lot of times the power pull will just be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you just end up getting hit. So, uh, it's not that reliable for protecting against Super Dash. And then similarly, uh, his reverse Kamehameha, you know, it does have a big hitbox, but a lot of times you're just kind of opening yourself up to being hit. Occasionally you will counter hit them, like you saw right there. But you know, also a lot of times you just end up getting hit. And I do think that canceling into the Kamehameha is kind of a good way to protect yourself against that. Uh, but it's one of those things where it's like you have to kind of put more work into baiting their super dash than they have to put into like just super dashing at you. And the reward for landing this Kamehameha is not amazing. You just kind of get like a small combo. So I definitely think that GT Goku has to be worried about Super Dash a lot. It limits a lot of his movement options, even stuff like this, like his uh, 1S or 3S moves. Like, he's, he's kind of opening himself up to Super Dash a lot by becoming airborne, so he can't do down heavy. Plus, he has a very stubby down heavy, so that can limit his effectiveness against Super Dash as well. So it's not like Super Dash is just free against him. Obviously, you can bait and punish it pretty easily, but I do think that that's one of his bigger weaknesses. Along with his stubby limbs, I think those are like his two big problems. So I feel like when GT Goku is playing neutral, really his strategy is just like wait for his assist to come up and then use his assists as an opportunity to close the gap, which is not really what you want a character to do. You want your character to have their own options that they bring to the table, not just be reliant on assists. So yeah, I, I don't think his neutral is amazing by any means. I don't think it's as good as a character like Piccolo, Vegito, Bardock. But again, is that is that an unfair comparison? Probably. Uh, can a character with just pretty good neutral, like I think his neutral is pretty good. A character with pretty good neutral and that level of damage and post level 3 Oki, can they be top tier? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. And then once you get sort of past the neutral phase, once you get in on the opponent, his mix-ups are very strong. He's very good at keeping the pressure on. Uh, so up close and personal, he is definitely a very oppressive rushdown character. My question is just like, is his neutral good enough to uh, be able to put him into that situation regularly? I think we're going to have to wait and see a little bit. Uh, so we've covered some of his pros and cons, and now I just kind of want to talk about... Uh, what do I think needs to be done with the character? Do I think he needs a nerf? Long story short, I think the only potentially objectionable thing in the character, the only thing that has me worried about the character being in the game is his post level 3 Oki. I mean, his post level 3 Oki is actually insane. It's like the best in the game, without a doubt. And yes, it is kind of hard to land his level 3, don't get me wrong. It's harder to land his level 3 than it is most characters, but it's not like that hard. Usually if you have the corner, you're going to be able to do it without too much trouble. And then like the mix-ups that he gets are just stupid. Like <laughs> he has so much time to do whatever he wants to you while you're getting up. So uh, the post level 3 Oki I think could definitely be problematic. Uh, I would not be super shocked if we end up seeing a ton, a ton of spirit bombs at EVO this year. Uh, and then again, I wouldn't be that shocked if we just don't see the character that much. It could just end up that it's more effort than it's worth when you can play someone like Bardock or Piccolo or Gotenks. Maybe he's more effort than he's worth, but I think definitely the only thing that I could potentially see an argument for nerfing is the post-level 3 mix-up because it is very strong. I don't think his damage needs nerfed, as I discussed. I don't think the ability to combo off of his level 3 needs nerfed because in a real match, touch of death combos... While they are going to happen, it's not going to be every single game, and it's definitely not going to be every single touch that GT Goku gets. The requirements are just a little bit too steep in terms of the resources that he needs to spend. So I don't think his damage needs nerfed, and uh, I don't think we're going to see a nerf for this character. Uh, definitely, uh, Arxis has said that they're not planning on doing any balance changes. 
uh, at least for like the rest of the year until like the next big update comes to the game. So I don't think we're going to see any nerfs to the character uh, anytime soon. But again, this all comes with the caveat that we could be wrong about all this. <laughs> the character could easily end up very strong or he could end up, you know, not making that big of a splash in tournament play. I think we'll have to wait and see. But for now, sort of my, my prediction is I think GT Goku is a strong character. I wouldn't be surprised if he's top 10, but do I think that he's the best character in the game? Probably not. Do I think that he's so strong that a nerf is needed to prevent him from taking over the meta? No, I don't think that's the case at all, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. One thing I do know is that he is a very fun and exciting character, and I think that he's added a lot of interest to the game, so I'm excited to get a lot more time in with the character and to see players like Goichi uh, put some time in and see what they're able to do. So. I'm very optimistic about uh, the state of the game right now, and uh, we'll have to see exactly what can be done with GT Goku, because he's really hype, and I think if he does end up seeing a lot of tournament play, it's going to make for some really exciting moments. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Do you think I'm just wrong and the character is busted and needs a nerf ASAP? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know. But with that, I'm going to end the video. So thank you so much for listening to me ramble, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.